Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Well, a really exciting day today in the shop. Not only was it parts delivery day, but it's also the day that we are starting what I've been looking forward to probably the most on this build, and that is the very scary double rear frame rail replacement on our 71 Cuda. Now, a lot of you guys probably would have been terrified just with cutting out that much sheet metal that I did in the last video, but it's going to get even scarier because a lot of the stuff that's left on here is going to be on the floor out of the car and the new stuff is going to be welded together and lifted up in one piece in the bottom of the car so and i'm going to do the best that i can to show you guys step by step on my process for how i'm going to do that now what's really nice is that i didn't get super carried away when i cut out all the sheet metal that was up here and i still left enough things here that i can use this for reference for measurements for everything that i need to to make sure that we are replicating exactly how it is on the car today while also welding it together on the floor because we want it to be as close as possible now go ahead and let's take a look here a quick damage assessment you can see here the rear frame rails i mean this side actually isn't super super bad but if i'm going to go to this extent and cut out that much stuff all this stuff's going to be brand new guys you know how i roll by now over here on the passenger side yeah this side quite a bit worse okay Unfortunately, these frame rails being rotted out is a big reason why a lot of these cars are sitting and rotting into the ground today in fields because nobody wants to take on jobs like this. But I'm going to show you guys it's really not that difficult to do. So let's take a quick look here at our brand new sheet metal. Again, this is from AMD. The stuff is a work of art, guys. Love their stuff. It's really, really high quality sheet metal. Um, right here on the cross brace, you can see here our bumper mount holes are going to be lining up with the back side of the frame rails there. Those just get done with through bolts and we're going to go ahead and do that now that should make sure that our back measurement between frame rails from that side to that side is exactly where it needs to be and we will verify that now on the inside here the frame rails are going to be pushed apart by our strut mount and you can see right here on the original one the bump stop location we're going to take some measurements right here off of that to make sure we've got the right spacing we can also measure from the back side of the strut mount to the back of the car the other side's a little bit different and you can actually see that this 90 degree part of that bracket is butted completely up against that little flange there so really easy reference points to look at with that you can also see here this uh, brace from the frame rail to the inner rocker you know the frame rails push completely against that so what we're going to do is take an inside measurement from corner to corner We'll cut a piece of square tubing, we'll stuff it up there to push these frame rails out and make sure that they are completely pushed out into the exact dimension that they need to be. Now, quick disclaimer, if you guys have a frame jig, of course use it, okay? My style, and especially with what I have left on this car, I really don't think I'm gonna need a frame jig. And that is because there is enough back here, enough that I can reference where, you know, I'm not hanging these frame rails completely in thin air. Now, I like leaving the rear seat pan in when I do this, and as I go through here, just like I showed you guys how to peel the metal off, like with the quarter panels and everything else, I'm gonna do the same thing, almost like I was going to be saving this rear seat pan, because I wanna make sure that I've got these same radiuses with the frame rail pushed tight up against that before we go ahead and weld in these support pieces. And by doing that, it's gonna make sure that our frame rail is right where it needs to be, so that way we can lift out this rear seat pan, drop the new one in, and everything should line up exactly how it was from the factory. So, a lot to do. Again, big scary job. But uh, yeah, enough talking. Let's go ahead and let's get to work.
right guys, so I've got it all pinned together here and I wanted to walk you through a couple things. Before you ever think about putting this all together and pinning it in place, bolting it together, welding it, whatever, you gotta make sure it matches the car. So, you know, I put together just a couple different places that I measured from, you know, inside or outside of frame rails across. You do cross measurements between the different holes that are in the frame, um, you know, different screw holes, that sort of thing. And what I found is that the car is actually almost a half inch off on this rear strut mount, okay? Just from the front to back, it's almost a half inch kind of cocked in one direction or another. Um, but, uh, you know, these cars were put together 50 years ago. They didn't have quite the precision that we have today with assembling cars. So, and no, I did not match the half inch off. It's exactly square. <laughs> and uh, yeah, my OCD kind of kicked in with that. But once I got it all measured out and where I wanted it, again, making sure that the outsides of the frame rails are exactly the same, making sure that the distance between the frame rails up towards the front is exactly where it needs to be. I went ahead, I pinned everything together with tech screws. I also went ahead, used my paint marker and marked all the places that I'm gonna drill the holes. I can also prep the insides of the frame rails and make sure that everything is gonna be ready to weld together. So the reason for putting in these screws, guys, there's about a half inch or so of play and adjustment on those bumper bracket mounts. So once I had everything where I wanted it, I cinched those bolts down, pinned it into place, and now I can take it apart and put it together a million times, use the same screws, and I will get the exact same fitment and the same measurements everywhere that I need to. The strut mount here, again, took measurements, used a lot of different things as reference points to mount bolts to this bump stop, front to back, up to these holes here. I mean, try to measure it as many places as you can, get it as close as you possibly can. Um, and again, at the end of the day, the car ain't perfect as it sits today. Uh, the front here, now again, this is kind of to, uh, to keep the frame rails pushed apart, and you'll see when I go to get it fit in the car, I'll actually have to cut off that brace because where it sits up here and it hangs up on top of this perch, um, you cannot wedge this up in there with that brace in between them, okay? Because you actually need to bring in the frame rails towards the front when I go to fit this. So I will have to uh, cut this bar out, but I'll be able to use that to wedge up in there and push the frame rails back apart to make sure that you know they're tight up against the sides of the car So because it should match up just fine. So from here, guys, I get to blow the whole thing back apart, use a little bit of uh, grinding, a little bit of weld through primer, weld it permanent, and then I get to go through the, the joy of cutting out and trying to save as much of that floor as I can so that way I know exactly how high up and where my frame rails need to mount. So, a lot of work left to do. Let's get it done.
All right, guys, so that was a lot of working and not much talking, so let me kind of bring you up to speed on everything that has gotten us to this point. So as you guys saw, I used a step bit to drill out the holes for where the old frame rails were, made it really easy to do that, and also made sure I didn't destroy that rear seat pan, because now you guys hopefully can see why I wanted to leave that radius, so that way I can know that the, the uh, frame rails are pushed up high enough. So got those cleaned up on both sides, use the air chisel on the bottom here, because up and along the top, and you can really see it now, you know, the shoulder of the top of this frame rail does sit on top of these uh, support pieces here. So you got to get up in there, you got to clean all those up and uh, remove all the old metal from it. So as far as the car goes and measurements and alignment and everything else, I mean, you guys can see here, it lined up really, really nicely where those holes were. So the frame rails are exactly where they need to be. The only issue, and you guys can see my fancy dancy Harbor Freight uh, Porta Power here, is that I needed to push the front of the frame rails out a little bit wider than the bar that I had originally. And you know, I could have put the bar in there, but I would not have had as tight a fitment as I have now. So those frame rails are really slammed against. I mean, you guys can see the fitment too with the brackets, with everything down here on both sides is really, really nice. And we should be able to pinch those together super, super easy and uh, get those welds done. So the only other thing that I did here, guys, I did mark the center line on my tail panel and also my rear cross rail just to make sure that, you know, one side, you really can't go too far forward in one direction or another, but that just made sure that the back of them are exactly where they need to be and I'm not welding them in completely crooked or completely sideways. So again, a lot of you guys were uh, surprised that I kept the tail panel up there, but it does serve a, serve a purpose and it helps me align things a lot easier. And uh, yeah, I definitely used it. Otherwise I would have welded it in slightly off center. So we got our clamps in, everything's nice and tight, pulled nice and tight together. And really guys, there's only, uh, what, maybe a dozen or so welds here holding the rear frame rails in and it'll finish up this job. So finish up this job at least, then we get to do the trunk pan, the rear seat pan and everything else left on the car. So let's go ahead, let's get these burned in and let's finish up this job. All right guys, well our rear frame rails are completely installed and don't laugh when I say this, but kind of like building a house, you have to start with a solid foundation. And even though our 71 Cuda was not the most solid car to begin with, really making sure that these frame rails are done right in the right place is gonna make things go a whole lot easier and a whole lot faster. So they're all welded in. Everything turned out really, really nice. Everything is very tight also, which I really like back here. Um, all of our welds are dressed out. Definitely don't forget to do that. Um, yeah, turned out really, really good. So from here, we're gonna cut out the rear seat pan next. That'll be in the next video, followed by the trunk pan, wheelhouses, quarter panels, 
and then welding everything together for one last time and wrapping up the sheet metal on this car. So this thing feels like it's absolutely flying. Certainly having all of the sheet metal sitting in here garage, in my garage, ready to go, is making things go a whole lot faster as well. So if you haven't done so yet, guys, hit that subscribe button and uh, stay tuned because more to come very, very soon. Take care. I'll see you next time.